dealership, private owner, or auction. Now's a great time to buy a used car as prices across the board are lower than they've been for a long time. But which of these three choices is going to give you the best car for the best price? In this video, we're reviewing the pluses and minuses of each of these three choices to make sure you save your money, your time, and maybe even your butt. Welcome to the channel for anyone who wants to enjoy cars without breaking the bank. And one of the best things you can do to save your money is to buy a used car instead of a new one. I made a whole video breaking down why buying used is almost always a better financial decision than buying new. So check that out if you haven't already. I've owned about two dozen cars through my life, all of them used. So I've had plenty of exposure to the different avenues of buying used cars. Most of my experience has been with used car dealerships and private owners. So I'll be speaking to the pluses and minuses of those two options. I don't have that much experience with auto auctions, but thankfully my buddy Chris over at the East Coast Classics YouTube channel has plenty. So he'll be joining us near the end to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly of buying used cars from auctions. But let's get started with the big advantages of buying from a used car dealership. The first dealer advantage is how easy it is. Dealers have a whole system in place that's designed to make it easy to put you into one of their cars. That means they'll have plenty of good pictures and a detailed listing of the car so you have a better sense of it before you commit the time to go and see it. Private owners, yeah, not so much. A dealer makes it easy to schedule a time and place to see the car. Heck, their business hours are there for all to see. Whereas, you won't even get a response from half the private sellers that you contact. And if you do, it can be tricky trying to schedule a time to meet them in between their busy daily schedules. Dealers also take care of all the paperwork for you, so you usually don't have to take a separate trip to the DMV or your AAA to get the car titled. And if you live in a state that requires a smog check for a title change, like we have here in California, the dealer will already have done that for you. So if you're someone who just needs a car quick and easy, a used car dealer is a great option. And that brings me to the other advantage of a used car dealer, the option for a trade-in. Warning, you will not get a good deal on trading in your old car to a dealer. I mean, you'll be lucky if you even get them to pay half of what you'd be able to sell your old car for if you did the work and sold it yourself. But selling your own car is an art form in and of itself. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe as I have a whole series of videos coming soon revealing the secrets I picked up over the years on how to sell cars privately for top dollar. But if you don't want to deal with the headache of selling your own car and you're willing to lose some money just because you don't have the time, a dealer will happily take that old car of yours off your hands. The third advantage of buying from a used car dealer payment options. If you don't have the cash handy to buy a good used car outright, you'll have to finance the car in order to purchase it. And no private owner in their right mind is gonna lend you money so you can drive off in their car. And while you might be able to get a payment plan directly through your personal bank, they're usually not very flexible with how old the car is that you're financing or with their private party rates. But many used car dealers offer financing in-house, again, making it easier for you. The final dealership advantage protection. Some used car dealers will offer you some sort of warranty as well as a buyback option if you don't like your car after a certain amount of time. This varies wildly from dealer to dealer with the higher end dealers like CarMax offering some of the best protections. For that matter, any certified used car is going to be your best bet when it comes to warranties and returns. You'll pay more for that safety net but it might be worth it to you. Buy a car privately? It's a roll of the dice. If you don't like it or if it breaks down, you're pretty much stuck with it. So what are the advantages of buying from a private seller? The biggest is purchase price. You'll spend a lot less money when you buy a car from a private seller compared to a dealer. I found you can save anywhere between 10 and 40%. For context, that means if a private party car is worth about 10 grand, you'll be spending around 13 grand to buy the same car from a dealer. Dealers are in the business of making money. Whereas most private sellers aren't looking to make top dollar, they just want to get rid of their old car as soon as they can. So as a buyer, it's much easier to get a great deal. The second private party advantage, you'll have a better understanding of the car's history. You see, most used car dealers get their cars from auctions, more on those later, so they won't know too much about the history of the car that they're selling. 
At most, they'll have a standard report, like an auto check or a Carfax, that they can show you. Now, these reports are valuable as they'll show you things like how many previous owners the car had or if the car suffered from any flood damage or accidents. I don't personally buy a used car without seeing at least one of these reports. You can buy these reports for yourself for around 30 or 40 bucks each. But an auto check or Carfax report won't give you the full picture of how the car was treated. While you might find some service records listed on a Carfax, what you really want is a folder full of actual service records. You'll almost never get this from a dealer, but there's a decent chance that a private seller will have at least some records that they can hand over to you. Service records are gold because they prove what services have been done and what might be needed in the future. Beyond service records, it's also great to get a sense of the private seller when you meet them in person. Are they messy and unorganized? Or do they seem like the kind of owner who took pride in their car and was always on top of services? Did they drive the car with care? Or were they a young hellion that left a red light in their engine at every opportunity? Buy a car from a dealer, you won't have any clue. There's a third option when it comes to buying cars, and that's auctions. Now, I'm not talking about auction websites like eBay or Bring a Trailer. Ultimately, those sites are just conduits that connect you with either a dealership or private party on the other end. So everything I just talked about applies to those sites as well. What we're focusing on here is more old school, when you're bidding directly using an auction company, either through a website like Copart or in person. Most of these auctions require dealer licenses. Like I mentioned earlier, this is where most used car dealers get their product. So if you're not a dealer, you'll have to go through a broker to be part of these auctions, and it can get pretty complicated. But if you don't wanna mess with that, and you're a normal person who wants to see the car that you're buying in person, you can still rely on that old standby, the government surplus auction. So let me introduce you to my friend Chris. Chris has an awesome YouTube channel called East Coast Classics that I highly recommend. He reviews some amazing classic cars, but he's also a government auction connoisseur. He's been to over 50 auctions where he's bought 15 vehicles of all shapes and sizes. Take it away, Chris. Brad, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about some of the things I've learned by going to these state surplus auctions. And this topic is, it's near and dear to my heart, partly because I just love a good deal, right? I love finding a great car, good looking, good running car, and not spending a lot of money. I love the hunt, right? When you go to these auctions, you have to find that good car. And thirdly, anytime I get to look at cars and spend time with cars and play with cars, it always makes for a good time. My very first experience with these government surplus auctions was sometime in the mid-1990s or so. A buddy of mine, he came home from an auction with a Dodge Diplomat police car. It was an unmarked car, and he only spent just a few hundred dollars for that car, and the time that he had it, it was a good-looking, good-running car. It wasn't until years later that I got to go to my very first state surplus auction. It was state of Delaware, state-owned vehicles. I was expecting retired police cars, and they were there, but I was surprised that there were any other type of car that you could imagine. There were pickup trucks and cargo vans, there were minivans, there were plain old four-door sedans as well. The primary reason you get to these auctions is to save a few bucks, right? You're looking for the deals. And I'm here to tell you straight up right now, they're out there, but they're few and far between. It's not as easy as as simple as you may think. I've got examples right here in my driveway, these three, of exactly what I'm talking about. This Astro van has modest miles on it. It was used by a school district near here. It has cold air conditioning, no rust, it runs great. I put about $100 into it. I paid 1,000 at the auction. And you know, if you went to Facebook Marketplace, maybe it's worth $1,500, $1,800. It was a nice buy, not a home run by any means. Next to it is a Chevy Caprice PPV. This is a former state police car. These were only sold to law enforcement when they were new. And that makes it a pretty unique and pretty rare sight out on the road and at these auctions as well. I paid $4,900 for this car, a few more hundred dollars for a starter that it needed. All in, I'm somewhere around $5,300 or so. Retail pricing on this car, if you went to Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, somewhere between $6,500 and $7,500. This is a really good example of some of the deals and bargains that you can find at these auctions. And thirdly, this is a 2001 Jaguar XJ8. I bought this from a police impound lot, and cosmetically, it was quite nice when I got it, but mechanically, it's a disaster with the engine seized, with the brakes blown out, and the radiator leaking. This is a perfect example of some of the bad deals that you can also get at these auctions. And you see there's certain things you can and can't do when you go and inspect a car at the auction. One of the things you can't do, you can't drive it. You have no idea how good the brakes are, how the transmission shifts, and the price that you pay for these auction cars has to compensate for that level of risk and your risk tolerance. 
you see, it's not just the risk that you have to absorb when you go to these auctions. It's also the time commitment and the effort. You see, when I go to these auctions, they're typically 30 to 50 cars or so at the auction lot. And it sounds like a good number of cars, but when you start breaking it down into different categories, there's always a number of cars that don't run, that were towed in or in lousy condition with bad paint. And it's just a disaster to begin with that you wouldn't even consider. And so now the potential pool of cars that you would consider gets smaller and smaller. And it takes many months, many trips to the auction, many visits to understand what the selling prices are of certain cars that you're looking for in order to find the value, to find the good deal, because you don't want to pay retail because of the level of risk. You're making the time commitment. Also, there's no financing options when you go to these auctions. They want cash in hand up front when you pay for that car. There's no exceptions to that rule. There's also the inspection period too. You see, you're given a period of time on a specific date for a specific block of time to go look at the cars, to start the cars, to look them over, to check them out, to look underneath, to look for rust, to hear the engine and engage the transmission and so forth. If you can't make the inspection time for that period of time that they give you, you're on your own. It's SOL at that point. There's no secondary inspection times. You have to accommodate their schedule on their timing and their rules. So Brad, despite all the risk and the limited selection and the time commitment and the unknown service history that you occasionally get with these cars and the need for cash, there still can be some good deals that you can find at these surplus vehicle auctions. Regardless of all that though, it always makes for a great story. So there you go, three different ways to buy a used car. But now I want to turn it over to you. Which route have you found to be the best for buying a used car or the worst? Any tips that have worked for you that I didn't cover here? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Make sure to check out Chris's channel, East Coast Classics, and to subscribe right here if you haven't already for more practical car guy, used car tips, and retro reviews. So good luck, happy hunting, thanks for watching, see you next time.